reaching the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the covenant being established. And God says it takes wealth to do that. Yes. And He wants us to have that wealth, so much so that He will give us the power to get it. That's the kind of mindset that God wants us to have because we are His children. That means I have to look at life differently the way I used to. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back. This is Alan Bagg, and we're on our Wisdom for Life broadcast. This week we have with us Didier Tisson, a man of God that is walking in the kingdom principles. You know, so often we can talk about how awesome God is and what His Word is, and we're all yes and amen and cheer and shout, and sometimes we're in a place where we say, well, I can say amen in church, but it would be nice if it was working in my life. And this is a man who has taken the principles of God, has preached them from the pulpit, has a powerful ministry, but has also applied them practically in life, in the realm of business, and seen the principles of God manifesting everything that God has promised him. And so we want to glean that wisdom from him today. So Didi, once again, welcome back to Wisdom for Life. Thank so you, Doctor. With us. Thank you. It's great to be here and sharing the Word of God again and discussing the Word of God, which is so exciting. Yes. You know. Yesterday we tapped into the concept of walking in a wealth mindset. Yes. And you, you spoke about going from a poverty mindset. And then we always think like the difference between a poor person and a rich person. But you broke that apart and said, hang on, before we look at rich mindset, there's a wealth mindset. And that reminded me of the scripture we see here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Mm -hmm. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth. Did you get a hold of that? God gives power to get wealth. So <laughs> He can't be against wealth if He's giving you the power to get it. So obviously He wants wealth in our lives because He says wealth is something you do need. And now he's going to give you the power to go get it. Notice it doesn't say he gives you the wealth. He gives you the power to get the wealth. Now, there has to be a reason for that. And it gives us that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Now, when we talk about covenant, sometimes people you know, think old covenant, new covenant, all that type of thing. Covenant really is God's promise to his people. Yes. In that... He swears to something. He doesn't just say, like sometimes we say, you know, can you come? And he says, yeah, I'll try. And what we really mean is I'm, I'm going to probably be too tired to come. Mm. No, when God says something, He, in the Word says, we ought to be the same way, swear to our own hurt. Now, He won't hurt, but He swore to the death of His Son, Jesus. And so when you talk about covenant, don't get lost in the things like, you know, yes, they... They, they, when God spoke to Noah and through that rainbow established a covenant, he'll never again destroy people with a flood uh, or destroy mankind with a flood. Uh, we know that there are various types that we see different covenants, but they're all the same covenant really from that original covenant with Adam to be fruitful, to multiply, fill the earth, subdue it and take dominion. Now everything since then is the enemy trying to steal that from us and stopping God's plan in the earth. So ultimately when Jesus came, and he settled it through his death and resurrection that all sin can be paid for and that we can have eternal life and be redeemed to a relationship with our Father, that we can enjoy all of God's creation the way Adam was designed to. That is restoration of relationship, restoration of provision, restoration of assignment, restoration of all these things. And in that restoration, therein is the covenant, Jesus said, for this purpose the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. And so that's the covenant of God. And so this program, our ministry, our outreaches into prisons, the church, getting people saved, reaching the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that is the covenant being established. And God says it takes wealth to do that. Yes. And he wants us to have that wealth so much so that he will give us the power to get it. Now, we, that, that means I have to look at life differently the way I used to look at it. That's right. Because I came into the kingdom yes. with a lack and a poverty mindset. That's right. And, and unfortunately, you know, your, your life will go where your thoughts are. That's you right. Know? As so a man thinks in his heart. So, so easy. easy. 
So he'll stay stuck even though he's born again, his spirit is brand new, and he's connected to God yes. with his heart, with his spirit, which belongs now to God. Mm -hmm. But if he's not renewing his mind, he'll stay stuck right. in the old doing things, old way of doing things. Yes. So if a person has been uh, born in lack, in poverty, and he saw his parents struggle, mm -hmm. making ends meet, you know, and uh, living from hand to mouth on a daily basis and just waiting for the end of the month, it, unfortunately, in many ways, in many, most of the time, it becomes part of their makeup yes, of who they are. That's right. You know, and a poverty mindset is a, is a mindset that lives for today. But a wealth mindset is a mindset that leaves a legacy. In other words, you're thinking about not only this month, you're thinking about the next few years, mm -hmm. you're thinking about your children, you are teaching your children that yes. you can do anything. You on it's nothing's impossible that's for you. Right. And that's the kind of mindset that God wants us to have because we are his children. Well, isn't the word say that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children? That's right. Now, most people hardly leave anything. They, it's, it's all debt and, and unpaid bills to their children. That's right. Now, we think, well, if I could just leave an inheritance to my children, that would be great. Yes. But he says you'll leave an inheritance to your children's children. You know, a revelation I got out of that is that, like you say, you're leaving a legacy of, of self-generating wealth. Yes. That your children will not be able to exhaust in their lifetime. Yes. That by the time they die, they will be leaving what you left your children yes. for their children. Yes. So we're talking about a long-term mindset and lifestyle. Exactly. And, and that's not just rands in the bank or dollars in the bank. No, but it's also a wealth mindset and teaching your children to, to have this mindset means, you know, the more problems the world has, the more wealthier you will become. Because wow. a wealth mindset sees an opportunity huh. in every problem. There you go. A poverty mindset sees a problem in every opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, so, that's so, so true. Yeah, so a, 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 a wealth mindset knows and understands that you'll get paid for the solutions you bring to life, not for the problems you bring to life. That is so important. So a, a wealth mindset will always step into the creative power of God. You said something, I think it was yesterday, where you, you said that a poverty mindset has a sense of entitlement. Yes. And this is actually highlighting what that is. Now, let me just say this right here before we go any further, because... Uh, you know, sometimes people say, what are you telling us that, that, that all poor people are cursed? Or, or is, is, is that poor, it's a curse to be poor. Mm. No, the, 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 don't identify yourself as a poor person mm. or as a rich person. If you're born again, you are a child of God. Now, we're living in a state around us. And the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Proverbs 10. Yes. That, that is the promise of the word. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. So if you're born again, as far as God's concerned, you are rich. Now we may look at our life and where we're living and it doesn't reflect that. So let me just say this right off the, so that we're on the right footing here. Poverty, not the poor person. Poverty is a curse. The word's clear on that. Yes. Deuteronomy 28. You, you go read it from verse 15 onwards. It talks about your livestock dying. It's talking about your basket always being empty. It talks about you losing your, your transport, your ox, everything. Yes. It's just, you know, it is, you're losing stuff. That's poverty. And the reason for it is to destroy a person. And that's the intent of the enemy. Now, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and then have that life abundantly. And so he broke the curse of poverty 
It's a curse. Now he lays before us life and death, blessing, cursing, therefore choose life. And I really want to bring this across so that we don't lose the message because the enemy would love to use a fence to stop a message from being heard. Is that there are some poor people who really have an amazing work ethic. They, they will get up before anybody else in, the, in, in that city and go on transport and spend most of their salary to get to the workplace and then work their full hours and come home when it's dark at night. And even if the children are in bed, they did it for their children. That's how much they love their kids. Yes. And that work ethic has to be commended. That is an amazing thing. But God never intended for a person to live like that for the rest of their lives. Yes. He redeemed us out of sin, at the same time redeemed us out of sickness and disease, and He redeemed us from poverty and lack. And very often, it's just that ritual of day in, day out, day in, day out. Before you look at it, 40 years have gone past. Yes. You say, well, what was I working for? I thought we were going to... And that's, that's the lie yes. of poverty is that if you work hard enough, eventually you'll get your nose above the water. And it doesn't. It keeps a person trapped. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere along the line, I'm going to stop and say, hang on, what is God's promise? Mm -hmm. What is God's blessing? And then on purpose, start to see things differently and to renew the mind to God's truth. And here it is the promise. God wants you to get wealth. So you can start right there where you are in that exact work situation, in that neighborhood that you're living in right now. But you can change your mindset today and live with a wealth mindset and that'll begin to bring you up out of that situation. That's right. And, and a wealth mindset uh, allows you to feel empowered. In other words, you expect to be blessed. That's <laughs> you expect to find favor. Yes. You expect to find favor in people's eyes, not only in God's eyes. Right. So in other words, people will be attracted to you to bless you mm -hmm. because that's the, 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 the result of trusting God. Yes. People will that's draw people, God will draw people to your life to bless you, yeah. to favor you, to advance you, to Amen give to you that. opportunities. And if you're still stuck in a poverty mindset, those opportunities can seem like problems. Huh. But when yeah. you are tapped into the wealth mindset, the opportunities that come your way will, 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 will be a solution yes. to bring you to the next level, to bring a solution to the problem that is existing because yes. you've got the creative power of God mm. that's being activated in your life. Right. Because you looking at God, your spirit, is searching for answers from God for where you can bring a solution to a problem on this earth. I think that's where people are getting stuck. Mm. Is there's no lack of opportunities. No, you know, <laughs> I, I, I like to say anyone who's had a shower has had a good idea. Yeah. Come on, how, how many of you have been there just washing your hair and you think, wow, I've got an invention. I'm, I'm sure we all thought of things like, why doesn't someone do that? You know, you're trying to make something work is not working. You think, why isn't yes. somebody made? Yeah. Hello, yeah. here's an idea. Yeah. But now I don't know who do I phone with that. Who do I, I don't even know which number to pick up, to, to dial. Never mind start designing and finding the factory that's going to make it and the patents and the, and the you know, the, the, and then we get so overwhelmed. And, oh, you know, yeah. and then go back to where we are. Yeah. And here's, here's what I want you to get a hold of is that we're not reliant on our own wisdom. Mm -hmm. Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit, when He sends the Holy Spirit, that He will teach us all things. That's right. He'll teach us all things. That's not just the, the Scriptures. He mm -hmm. can. He, God knows exactly how everything works. Mm -hmm. And I always encourage people, I say, if someone comes up to you and says, do you know where I can get, or do you know anyone who makes... The answer should be yes. Mm. Yes. And I know we're thinking, but I don't. And you think yeah. you're lying. No, I do. Yes. I do know because he knows. Yes. He knows. Yes. And so therefore exactly. I know. I just got to go and ask him. That's so right. someone says, do you know how, do you know anyone who, who can get me a, 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 a thing in Bob? And I say, yes, I do. Just give me a few days. Yeah. And now you can go to the 
Holy Spirit and say, Father, you said you're going to give me wealth. Here's an opportunity. That's right. That, that thing doesn't exist, and I know you do know how it exists, or you even know where it is, and I know how to find that person. I know how to connect them. And then you begin to pray in the Spirit. Yes. And as you pray in the Spirit, you start to tap into that wisdom of God. And that's... That, now, see, a poverty mindset won't go that far. It's no. the wealth mindset that knows their wealth is not in their bank, but yes. in their relationship with God. With God. And that's where they find the solutions and the blessing from, is with their relationship with God. Like a poverty mindset, now there's abundance, there's an abundance of problems yes. on this earth. Yes. There's an abundance of problems at your workplace. Mm -hmm. But if you're still stuck in a poverty mindset, you'll see the problem in the opportunities around you. Hmm. But if you've got the wealth mindset, yes. you'll find the solution there in that problem. We go. So if we can only uncloud our hearts and allow the light of God to flood our minds and our spirits at our workplace and see the problems around us and ask God, where can we fix the problem yes. at our workplace? Mm -hmm. And you come and find a, a solution to that problem and bring that solution, make the sacrifice where it's needed. Yes, that's right. You will find promotion you will find favor and new doors will open for you at your workplace. Mm -hmm. So God will increase you yes. at your workplace where you are at. Amen. Because that's what the wealth mindset does. The wealth mindset provides for where you find yourself in any situation. If you find yourself in the middle of the desert mm -hmm. and your car's broken down yeah. and you need a tire for a flat you just had and if you can't find a tire you will be <laughs> stuck and die in desert yeah. in the desert but a wealth mindset knows that i will have a tire to change yes. i will have the providence for what i need in this situation yes now you don't need a million rand in the middle of the desert to change the tire right. you need a spare tire that's right to go on forward with your journey. Yes. So a wealth mindset, the, 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 the example I just want to, what I'm using here is to just explain that a wealth mindset knows that God will provide for the situation you are finding yourself in. Mm. So our life, as we go along in life, we've got different needs in different seasons. Yes. And a wealth mindset knows, doesn't matter in what season I am today, doesn't matter what situation I find myself in today. God will supply my need for my situation today. And I remember a while back, uh, well, we'd just been saved for a few years, and Janine and I were learning these things and, and, and developing them in us. And we walked into a house one day, and it had been broken into, and it had been totally emptied, and everything mm. was taken, just the big furniture was left behind. Something ri rose up inside of me, and I know it's the Spirit of God. And I turned to Janine, I said, you know what? Let's sow this right here. <laughs> Let's give this away. You can't steal from a giver. Yes. And I took her hands and said, Father, we bless this person. We say, you know, let just, just see. <laughs> even if they come back to the door right now and say, yes, your stuff back. No, no, we've given it wow. in the name of Jesus. Wow. And it's quite a long testimony. We're almost out of time, but uh, we saw Miracle after miracle happened through the insurance company, through contacts and that. We landed up with a value of stuff without cheating, with wow. way beyond what we could ever have done with our own personal money and through even the insurance company giving it back to us. We just saw things happening and God blessed us in that situation. Wow. See, that's, that's what you a say. Mindset. A wealth mindset has the ability to even in the middle of a situation, say, God's got this. He'll deliver us. Well, we're out of time. Well, I've got something to share with you. And Diddy's going to pray for you. We'll see you right after this.
The law didn't introduce the tithe. Abraham tithe. Why? Because he was blessed. Understanding the revelation of the blessing tithe will help you tithe out of a motivation of love for God rather than out of fear or condemnation. He wasn't blessed because he tithed. He tithed because he was blessed. In this powerful series, Alan Bagg reveals the truth about tithing that the enemy has tried so hard to keep hidden. You, if you get this, your whole Bible will change. You will learn of the power in honoring God's tithe and how to trust God with your finances and experience the absolute greatness of God. When a seed is sown, it always grows. If the environment is right, it will grow. God designed it to do that. And the whole kingdom is based on that seed principle. In this series, Alan Bagg will teach you how to apply this powerful principle accurately in your life. God has put into our hands the power to produce in our lives whatever we desire. You will learn how to experience abundant harvests in all areas of your life and you will learn of the fullness of God's blessing as it works in and through you. You don't have to force anything. You're going to see things start to change in your life because whatever you want in your future, you put that seed in and it will produce that future for you. Build your faith in the area of the tithe and the seed so that you can enjoy the abundant life that comes with God's blessing. Contact us here at Allen Bank Ministries by making use of any of our details. These are two powerful truths that are so necessary in the life of a believer. We want to live under that open window of heaven. We want to experience the excessive provision that God has prepared for us. And He's given us free and open access to it, and it's through the tithe. Now, I know sometimes people wrestle with the idea, isn't tithing under the old covenant law, and isn't it uh, something that's passed away? And yet, the tithe is God's system. It's part of His kingdom. It was put into the tithe so that those under the law could experience the blessing, because there it was a law of actions, it was a law of living under certain ways of doing things before something could happen. And so God wanted to give them access to heaven, access to the blessing. So He had to bring the tithe in as an action of law. But it existed long before, right from the Garden of Eden. And I show that in this, in this series, that you can see the tithe revealed right from Adam all the way through into the new covenant. And if you get a hold of that truth, your life will open up. And then, of course, that gives you access to sowing seed. And so once you sow your seed, then you begin to see multiplication and increase. And it's moving from that poverty mindset into a place of operating in the wealth by the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So get a hold of those today. Help it build and strengthen your faith. Well, we're going to take some time now for those that may, I know that you've been going through some troubles, some situations, some challenges. Uh, maybe it's in your business or in your family. But I'm going to ask Didier now to pray for us. And let's see some breakthroughs happening here. We've been talking about awesome things from the Word of God. And the God we know, He always follows His Word with signs and wonders to Amen. prove it. Amen. Yeah, so go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Allen. I, I really believe and trust that God's going to bring a breakthrough with this prayer in your life. I know that God is going to shift things around and bring nudges in your spirit that you just need to follow. And as you follow them, miracles are going to take place yes. and expect those miracles to take place. Father God, I thank you for each person watching this program. I thank you, Father God, for each person that's trusting you for a breakthrough. I ask you now, Father God, that the nudges, the promptings of your spirit will be identified. Yes. Oh, Father God, in their hearts, as they are alert mm -hmm. to your guidance. And as they, Father God, your people, as they follow your instructions, that they will see miracles, breakthroughs yes, taking Lord. place and radical favor, extreme favor, being shed abroad upon their lives. I thank you, Father God, that your people are blessed. Yes, I right. thank you, Father God, that your people's minds are yes. being reprogramming being reprogrammed according to your 
word, yes. according to your promises, and according to the knowing, Father God, in their own hearts that God wants me to prosper, That's that right. God wants me to go forward, that God wants me to advance, that God wants me to have a life where I'm experiencing more than enough. Praise I bless your people today. I command, Father God, that the curse of lack being broken over their lives. Yes. And Father God, that abundance enters and breaks forth <laughs> into their lives. Yes, thank in you. Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and all the honor for this. And we, we thank you for the, for, the, for, the, for the opportunity, Father God, to know and the privilege to know that you are for us. Yes. And if you are for us, what situation can drag us down. Praise Nothing God. can take us That's down. That's right. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, the God that we serve is one who answers prayer. And so we're standing in agreement here. The Bible says, if any two agree touching anything, it is done. You've got Didia and myself in agreement with you. And I believe for your breakthrough. I believe for your deliverance. And so when it happens, Please write to us. We'd love to hear from you. There's the details right there. Just let us know about your miracle. It really blesses us. It helps us to encourage others. And we love to hear the testimonies and let other people know about them. So thank you so much for writing in. Well, that's all we got time for today. And we look forward to being with you again tomorrow from Didier and myself. We want to remind you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We invite you to visit us online at allenbagministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bag. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, You'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.